As a struggling actor, I need all the breaks that I can get. At Liberty Buchimo. Cut. Liberty Bibbity. Cut. Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance. So you only pay for what you line. Need. Action. Cut. You can't say that. Sorry. Is this where they're gonna put the Statue of Liberty? Liberty. Are we married to mutual? Cut. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Guess what? Tomorrow we are bringing the show to Las Vegas what? for Grammy weekend. You do that. Oh, I did. Come on, and only ET's behind the scenes with her. That's a good question. Mm hmm. Oh, she is so talented. Girl crush. She's so talented. She's the best, really, yeah. she is. Okay, before we go, a supermodel surprise on The Masked Singer last night. Christy Brinkley unmasked as the lever, and I spoke to Christy all about it. She's hilarious. Night, everybody. Take care, y'all. Supermodel Christy Brinkley! It is a shame that the night... It's happening now. Fiesta, fiesta, it is underway. We're back. We're going to take you to Hemisphere Park live. All the fun, all the medals, everything in just a bit. Viva fiesta! The appraisal district getting ready to send out notices of values, and most people are in for sticker shock. Coming up, what you can expect, and what's the one thing you should do to minimize your tax increase. It's a big decision. President Joe Biden is tapping into a large portion of our country's strategic oil reserves. What that means for gas prices. The news at five starts now. Yes, get ready, my friends. First at five, it is official. Fiesta Fiesta is underway. And an hour into San Antonio's largest celebration, you can see the crowd there is just starting to show up. We'll have to wait a little bit, but you know it's going to be awesome there. Sky 12 is giving us these pictures over Hemisphere Park right now. As you mentioned, pretty early there. Crowds looking a little thin. Let's take a look at the traffic as folks are heading into downtown, perhaps to take part in the Fiesta Fiesta event. Not looking too bad there at I-10 there at the Y. We'll let you know if there's any traffic trouble spots, but right now looking pretty good. And as you mentioned, we are about an hour now into the official kickoff of San Antonio's Party with a Purpose, and it's going on right now at Hemisphere Park. That's right. That's where we find Steve Spreester, Ursula Perry, and Adam Kasky. They're getting ready for tonight's coverage from Fiesta's first official event. And we'll check in with Adam in just a bit, but first let's check in with Steve and Ursula. Tell us, from Sky 12, didn't look like a lot of people there, but it looks like you've got quite a crowd gathered around you right now, Steve. Hello and welcome to Fiesta Fiesta and boy are things ever cooking right now. Look at this great crowd we have behind us. People handing out medals, people collecting medals. We even have a former El Rey Feo behind us. Absolutely. <laughs> Fernando Reyes. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. It is, the weather is absolutely perfect for Fiesta this year and this is probably a bigger Fiesta at this hour than we've ever seen. Everybody wants to celebrate after the time off. And it's funny, every time I look around, it seems like there are more people yes. down here at Hemisphere getting ready. The official kickoff, of course, we're going to bring you live at 8 o'clock tonight, but we've got a lot more to cover before then. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to go over to Adam Kasky right now, who is standing by somewhere in all this pin pandemonium. Adam. Yes. <laughs> It is, and it's all about the pins and medals. And of course, a lot of fun, having a good time. People are being a little shy now that the camera's on, but we've been having our fun. This is the entrance to Pin Pandemonium here. You get in there, it gets crazy, especially if you start handing out or trading medals. It is a commotion, but it's a good commotion and a lot of fun. We're back! Fiesta, fiesta! It's normal this year, we're back in person. And it's nice outside. Steve mentioned it before, no humidity in the shade feels perfect. It's not like the June that we had last year when we we're all sticky and sweaty and I've come prepared. We'll go over some of this garb in just a bit along with talk about your forecast. We have a little bit of weather to talk about including a chance of storms in the extended forecast. We'll see you in a bit. Steve and Ursula. <laughs> Hey guys, we're gonna have so much fun out here. Adam's already geared up. He's even got a special surprise for later on tonight. <laughs> so you need to stay tuned. I don't even know what it is, but I've been warned. It's coming. Yeah, it has something to definitely do with confetti. 
Let me put it that way. Yes. That's all we know. I think there's going to be some royalty involved as well. Okay. All Sounds right. good. All right, well, Stephen Ursula, thank you so much. We're going to send it back to you guys. We're going to be... In just a little bit at six o'clock. Until then, have fun. If you are not able to attend Fiesta Fiesta tonight, just a reminder: we will have live coverage for you starting at eight. You can watch it all right here on KSAT 12, and of course, all of our streaming platforms. All right. So from Fiesta fun to your home and your money. Yes, we are talking property taxes. If you're a homeowner in Bear County, get ready for this number. Just take a minute. Yeah, new appraisals for single-family homes are up by an average of almost 28%. And no, it's not just you because no one's ever seen anything like this before in our area. Consumer reporter Marilyn Moritz explains why this is happening and also what you can do about it. Armin Furman bought his historic home south of downtown a decade ago. You know, I got the house when I could afford it in the neighborhood. Since then, his home's value has shot through the roof. It's probably tripled. Yeah. He'd better brace himself. In about a week, the Bear Appraisal District will mail notices to all homeowners with their new valuations. I think most people would call it sticker shock. Chief Appraiser Mike Amesquita tells us, on average, house values are up a whopping 27.8%. That's unprecedented and during a pandemic. And we expected values to tank and anything but that happened. Mm -hmm. With work from home, people were wanting more space, uh, values went up across the board. By law, appraisals must reflect the housing market, which is sizzling. High demand with limited inventory has driven sales prices way up and now appraisals too. But you likely won't pay taxes on that full new amount. For example, if your home was appraised at 250,000 and is now 300,000, there is a 10% homestead cap. So you will pay taxes on $275,000. Still, if taxing entities don't cut tax rates, many properties property owners will be paying hundreds more. What can you do? Make sure you claim your exemptions. You can also protest, and Mesquita encourages it. All the appraisal district gets out of higher values is a long, hot summer. The deadline to file is May 16th. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Now developing now a 19 year old man in critical condition after he was shot at an east side apartment complex. This is off of Hay Street. Not far from the AT&T Center, the call came out around 4 o'clock. San Antonio police were telling us the victim was shot multiple times during an altercation, and the person who shot him is on the run. Taking a look now at other stories we've been following today. It started with several calls for dumpster fires over on the west side and ended with five people without a place to stay. It all happened after an entire apartment building was destroyed by flames. Jonathan Cota reports the San Antonio Fire Department thinks an evicted tenant might have something to do with it. It was around 9 this morning when the San Antonio Fire Department was called out to the Silver Oaks Apartments on the west side. The flames destroying an entire eight-unit building. As you can see behind me, there's pretty much nothing left. Fire crews were immediately met with a number of challenges, one of them making sure the fire wouldn't spread. Our big challenge was exposure protection. It wasn't a windy day. Again, we were very lucky that it wasn't a wind day. We could have lost multiple buildings here. The scene here looks like the aftermath of an explosion, but it was a fire that quickly caused the roof and wall of this apartment building to quickly collapse. We spoke with the woman off camera who lived here and says she's lost it all. She had no insurance and now she has nowhere to go. The Red Cross making sure those displaced have a place to stay tonight. The building is a total loss, but the initial call was for a number of dumpsters on fire. Investigators believe this fire was not accidental. This fire is suspicious, so we have our arson folks out here. Um, there was a, a recent eviction of one of these units. So, and that person that lived there is a, uh, a person of interest uh, for our arson folks. Jonathan Cotto, KSET 12 News. Nearly 100 shell casings. That's what San Antonio police officers found at the scene of a shooting this morning. This was at a home on Donaldson on the northwest side. Officers were outside the home on Donaldson when we went by around 730 this morning. Now, they didn't have a lot of information to give us, but they did say that no one was hit. But we saw bullet holes in the home as well as in three vehicles nearby. We tried to speak with neighbors. None of them would speak to us on camera and police are still looking for the shooters. 
A 27 year old woman in critical condition tonight after crashing on Loop 410 last night. This was before midnight near the intersection uh, near the Wonderland of Americas. According to SAPD, the woman's SUV was stalled on the highway when a truck slammed into the back of her vehicle. She wasn't wearing a seatbelt and was taken to University Hospital. Right now, no charges are pending. Still ahead on the news at five, 180 million barrels of oil being released. It's President Biden's attempt to drive gas prices down. We'll explain his strategy coming up. Also, San Antonio is stepping up again to help people in Ukraine. We're going to tell you how much a local nonprofit has raised and how you can still help. That's up next. But before we go to break, we're going to give you another live look. This is Sky 12 flying over Hemisphere Park, where you know where that is? Fiesta, baby. That is Here. ground zero for Fiesta Fiesta, the official kickoff to the party with a purpose. And we're the official station for Fiesta, so stick with us. We'll be right back with much more. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom and tonight we are talking Will Smith, but not the actor everyone's been talking about after the slap at the Oscars. Coming up at six, a story about the Will Smith behind a local foundation. But that name has led to some mix ups after the actor Will Smith's Oscars outburst. Now the foundation's dealing with backlash. RJ Marquez talks with the group about trying to clear up this mess and he explains the work they do for kids in our community. Plus, the wheels of justice turning again at the Bear County Courthouse after major COVID delays. But now another issue has popped up, parking. Erica Hernandez with what you need to know before heading to jury duty, as well as what current COVID protocols are still in place. And also at 6 o'clock, it is metal mania down at Fiesta Fiesta today. So where do all of those medals come from? We're talking with one guy whose business is all about medals this time of year. That and more coming your way on the news at 6 o'clock. Looking forward to that, Myra. Thank you. So now we're going to talk about Ukraine. Obviously, it still remains on the minds of many San Antonians, and that's why the local nonprofit Ukrainian San Antonio continues to collect supplies for people in that region. This morning, the group returned to the Hilton Garden Inn at the rim. They've been collecting medical supplies all month long. And from San Antonio, those items are packed and shipped to different addresses in Ukraine. And listen to this. So far, the nonprofit has done a phenomenal job. They've raised about $300,000. So far, we uh, distributed about half of our money collected on the website and uh, about uh, 20,000 um, pounds of uh, humanitarian and medical supply aid. Makes a difference. Ukrainian San Antonio says that it plans to hold medical supply drives every Thursday as long as the war continues. We're going to have more details on the group. Just visit our website, ksat.com. Meanwhile, the White House is taking action today to try and generate relief for millions of Americans feeling the pain at the pump. President Biden announcing a plan to release a million barrels of oil a day from the country's strategic oil reserves. But will it be enough to lower gas prices? ABC's Ike Jachi in Washington with more. Today, President Biden announcing the release of one million barrels of oil a day from the nation's strategic petroleum reserves. Up to 180 million barrels total, the reserve's lowest level since 1984. Our family budgets, your family budgets, to fill a tank, none of it should hinge on whether a dictator declares war. This time last year, gas was around 287 a gallon. Today, AAA says the national average has ballooned to almost 425 a gallon. But critics say the move may not have the desired effect. Biden has twice released oil from the U.S. reserves in the past six months, 50 million barrels in November and another 30 million barrels in March after Russia invaded Ukraine, moves that have only had a muted effect on easing prices. Biden saying part of the problem is reduced oil production here at home. The White House says domestic oil and gas producers are sitting on more than 12 million acres of leased federal land that could be used to produce oil and gas, leaving Biden to talk about part two of his plan, achieving American energy independence. Not only to ease the pain that families are feeling right now, but to end this era of dependence and uncertainty and to lay a new foundation for true and lasting American energy independence. 
According to the Energy Department, as of March 25th, the U.S. strategic oil reserves had 568 million barrels remaining. The department says it'll use the revenues from this release to restock the reserves. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. All right, now we're going to take things outside here. Yes, I know you probably have Fiesta on the mind, but we want to show you a different part of our city right now. A live camera here over I-10. You're looking towards the northwest side where you can see traffic flowing kind of nicely right now. Not really that bad considering it is rush hour. It is, and it is also the official kickoff for Fiesta. Fiesta Fiesta in full swing for about the past hour and 15 minutes, and that's where we find our Adam Kasky tonight, which I can tell you, okay. if he's out there, there's a 100% chance of confetti raining. <laughs> and he's very happy. Look at him, oh. look at him. He's getting ready. Well, Tim, there's an update this year. The, the canyon was canceled, but yes, we still oh. do have a bit of confetti to go around for everybody. It gets everybody in the mood. Everybody's been asking about El Canyon, but I've got the and I've got my holster. Nice, look at that. Of Cascarones. Ooh, Cascarones. Yeah! Viva Fiesta! Oh, that's the homemade one with the good stuff. That really gets stuck all over you. Yes! Oh man, there's so much fun going on over here. We're gonna try to work our way over to the, some of the most elaborate hats coming up in a little, uh, coming up at six o'clock, okay? First we have, oh, thank you, I dropped a medal. Yep, there we go. This is the uh, bike to work day medal. Uh, anyway, let's chat forecast really quickly, show you a few graphics, then jump into things right now. Upper 70s out here. Oh, it's so nice. I think back to most fiestas and even last year in June when it was hot and sticky. We're in the 70s, upper 70s. Hill country in the 70s, low 80s south of town and winds pretty much calm. But you know how we test that here. Yeah, pretty much calm. All right, let's take a look at the graphics and our winds will be changing significantly again. Our winds will be changing significantly as they often are as we've noticed this spring, a lot of cold fronts and high winds. Well, the winds are gonna pick up again tomorrow. So prepare for that. Wind gusts probably about 20 to 30 miles per hour. So nothing like the 40 mile per hour gusts of uh, recent history, but still a noticeable wind. And it's also gonna be kicking up the dew points a little bit, adding some moisture in the air. That's the nice thing in terms of helping to fight fires and mitigate their spreading. We'll have dew points in the 60s this weekend and into next week. As for the weekend, I mentioned those dew points a little higher. You'll feel some mugginess. A lot of sunshine after we get rid of some morning clouds and otherwise temperatures well into the 80s. As for rain chances, we're looking at a few isolated pop-ups on Monday and then some scattered activity Monday night. Here's the cause, upper level low pressure system, as is often the case, giving us a little better placement than recent ones, dropping in and giving us the scattered activity possibly Monday night. So timing of course is everything with the river parade on Monday. No need to get worried yet because a lot can change between now and then and we can really hone in on the timing and placement of that action. Tomorrow though, 50 degrees in the morning, by noon 73, high temperature of 84. Look at those gusts up to 30 miles per hour, wall to wall sunshine. Sunny through the weekend as we talked about with the added humidity, warmer mornings, closer to 60. Then we get into next week after those storm chances, isolated Monday afternoon, a little bit scattered, 40% Monday night into next week. We're talking 90 degrees, so getting up right around 90. Hey, we found the hats. We were able to catch up with the hats. We have to show your hats. We're on KSAT right now. My goodness. These are awesome. You got Big Red, Barbacoa. We got Fiesta. I mean, we've got uh, Whataburger. This is all things San Antonio. Bill Miller, love the avocado. Chicken on a stick up top. How long did this take you to make? Um, a couple of days. That's it? A couple of days? A couple of days, yeah. I would think like since last fiesta. She's challenging. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about yours? This is what's the inspiration? Oh, mine are Mickey ears, giant sombrero Mickey ears. So and Wonderful. It has a big bow on the back. Oh, I see. And I love the beards. The beards. You guys went all out. There we go. <laughs> well, I tell you what. Viva fiesta! <laughs> Are you ready for some Fetty, right? It's not a party without the Fetty. And I bring my holster for good use. Yay! 
So many good Woo! sports out here. <laughs> she hit the Put <laughs> magic wand. All right, we're going to have a lot more fun coming up at 6 o'clock. The party is just starting down here, and we've got our special here on KSET later this evening starting at 8 p.m. See you all then. Looking forward to it. You know you're serious about Fiesta when your Fiesta hat has hats. This is true. Yes. Yeah, and I love that Mickey idea. Very cool. Super cute. All right, so, you know, there's so much going on this week in our area. Now we want to go out to the Valero Texas Open. That's where our friend Greg Simmons joins us now. So talk to us about uh, the conditions there during round one. And you know what? Just what Adam said yesterday, the winds have died down, so the scores are very good today. So when we come back, we'll let you know who's leading the first round of the Valero Texas Open. I may have to quiet down just a bit because there's another group coming up here on a breaking loss for the Spurs. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome live to the beautiful JW Marriott TPC Resort Course for the first round of the Valero Texas Open. Please welcome the defending Valero Texas Open champion, Jordan Spieth. The former Texas Open and Texas Longhorn began the defense of his Valero Texas Open title from last year. Teeing off shortly after one this afternoon at the number one tee. Roy McElroy, who started at 10 today, needs this putt to stay par from 16 feet out on 18, but he leaves it short and is not happy about it, settling for a bogey. How about one of your early leaders? Matt Kuchar is at 18 now. He needs a 12-footer to fall, and he does it to put him in a three-way tie for the lead at the time at 5-under. Joining Kuchar now at 5-under is J.J. Spawn, who is able to birdie 14 with a six-foot putt. Card. It was a good day. This course is uh, one of my favorites out on tour. There's there's a lot of um, a, a lot of good and bad that can happen here. I feel like this this place really punishes the bad shots, but it's it's a type of course that it rewards good quality shots. And uh, I was able to kind of maintain some some good golf throughout my second nine today. All right, and here's a look at the leaderboard. Russell Knox is in the lead by one stroke, seven under 65. Matt Kuchar in the hunt right now at five under 67. Heartbreaking loss for our San Antonio Spurs, who did not lead at all last night. They still had a chance to win in the last second against Memphis, only to drop out of the play-in tournament for now. The Spurs never led once in this game against the tough Grizzlies, who with a, without MVP candidate Ja Morant, who was out with knee soreness for his sixth straight game. Tyus Jones, the brother of Spurs, Trey Jones, took up the slack by scoring 25, but thanks to DeJounte Murray matching his career high at 33, the Spurs were able to work their way back to at least a tie in the fourth quarter. Then with just over five Five seconds left to play, had the chance to win the game. Devin Vassell is able to find Keldon Johnson on a brilliant play, but he can't get it to fall, and the Spurs fall as well, 112 to 111. It looked like it was going in. Um, you know, we just got to pick our brother up because at the end of the day, like I said, we know it's going in. I mean, we fought to the end. Um, there was times I think we were down 16, 17, and, you know, it looked like the game could have been a blowout, and we come back and keep fighting. Like, we can't be mad about our performance. And here's a look at the latest, Western, or I should say, the Western Conference standings because the battle right now really between the Lakers and the Spurs for that 10th and 11th position. The 10th gets them in. They play in tournament right now. The Lakers only a half game up, and they're playing Utah tonight. Live from the Valero Texas Open, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. All right. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. We hope that music got you in the mood. If you're not able to attend Fiesta Fiesta tonight, just one last reminder that we have live coverage starting at 8 o'clock tonight. Don't even have to leave your house. You can watch it all right here on KSAT 12 and all of our streaming platforms. But Stay it home is, and comfortable. Yes, but it is. But also, if you get out, I mean, Adam was out Can't there. Can't beat it's that Beautiful. Weather. Well, thank you for watching the news at 5. World News is next. We'll see you back here at 6.